Okay, now we are now looking at um, depreciation and we're starting by looking at straight line depreciation which is the easiest one to do. Wait a minute, it's all basically around a business and the way they keep their cash flow and managing their money. So when they buy um, a, a machine or something like that, then it will actually break down over time. So over time, the value of these things drop because they wear out. So if you think of a car, you buy a car, you drive it around, parts wear out and you've got to replace them, so the value drops. Or it could be replaced by better technology. Think about computers. They get replaced quite quickly because new technology comes out, so they depreciate. Their value drops, is what depreciation means. So it's regarded as an expense, and you can put that on your profit and loss statement. It can really only be estimated how much it drops by, just because of the fact that it is not really known what it's worth until the very end. So it's, it's an estimation. Now a lot of stuff at the tax department puts a percentage on it that it drops, so you've got guidelines if you're a business. There are two methods. Uh, the first one is uh, called reducing balance, uh, it's called the straight line um, method, and the next one's reducing balance. So today we're going to just look at the straight line. So what you do is you get the original cost of the item and just divide it by the estimated useful life. So it's not that tricky, so you just get work out how much it's worth to start with, work out how long you think it's going to last for, and then just divide it out. So when we do it for here, we'll have our depreciation per annum, so this is over a year. We've got a machine that's worth $250,000, and it's expected to last for 10 years. What's the annual depreciation? So it's pretty simple. You just get your 250000 which is how much the machine costs when you bought it, divide it by 10, and you get a grand total of $25,000 per annum is the depreciation of that item. So every year it's going to drop by 25000 So you can put $25,000 as an expense on your profit and loss statement and therefore you're saving up that money to replace the item when it completely wears out. So that's the idea behind that. However, what normally happens is you can actually sell the item for a certain amount. Even if it's a machine, you might be able to just sell it for scrap metal value. Um, if it's a computer, you might be able to pass it on somewhere else. So, um, in real life, you can sell the item for something. So, that's called a residual value. A residual value is how much you can get rid of it for. My brother-in-law had an old, really, really old car, an old Ford Laser, and he, he got it scrapped for 250 bucks. So that's how much it was worth at the end. So he couldn't drive it, it was unroadworthy, but the residual value or the scrap value was 250. So more realistic is having this kind of bit at the end. So let's have a look at that example that we just had a look then, which is that machine that we bought um, for the 250,000 bucks and you depreciated over 10 years. What happens if we could sell it for 25,000 at the end? So what we do is we've created a thing called a residual value. So once again, your depreciation per annum is going to be your original cost, which is our $250,000 worth. But this time we're going to take $25,000 because that's what we could be able to get rid of it at the end with. So that's our residual value. And you divide that out and you get $22,500. So what that means is it still depreciates, but not as much as before because you've going to have that bit of money left over at the end. So the residual value is how much is left over at the end. And this gives us our depreciation per annum, which is pretty cool. Now, at some stage you might want to know what the actual item is worth. So what's it worth at any time? That's called the book value. So on paper, how much is this item worth? Now the book value is useful for you because then you can work out if you're going to sell it early, how much you should sell it for, um, or if someone's going to buy it, you can tell them the price what it's worth when you've taken into account that depreciation. Because you've got to be able to sell it at that depreciated value, otherwise you can get uh, charged capital gains tax because you're actually making a profit on it. So the depreciation, the depreciated value or the book value is really good for uh, the calculation of capital gains and those things. So let's have a look. Um, an item is depreciated each year and you could sell it at any time but it decreases, it decreases in value every single time. What it's worth at the end of each year is known as the book value. Okay, the book value is what it is. So the more the, uh, the item is depreciated, the lower the book value is. Um, and the book value represents the cost of the item 
the original cost of the item, take away how much is depreciated. So the formula you've got is book value equals the original cost, take the annual depreciation times by the number of years that it's been depreciated. So let's go back to our original example. So we've got that $250,000 machine, we've got a residual value of $25,000 and we're depreciating each year. Um, so what is the book value? of that item after four years, we want to get rid of it after four years. So our original cost is 250000 and then we take away the 22500 which is our annual depreciation which we worked out from the question before, and we are timesing that by four. So when you do that, you'll end up with 160000 So what that means is our item is worth 160000 at the four year mark. So if we wanted to sell it, that's how much we'd get for it. Now, this gets a bit messy, but we can actually go to a depreciation table. And this is what a depreciation table looks like. It's pretty simple to follow. What you've got is you've got the age in years, you've got the annual depreciation, which is how much it drops each year, the cumulative depreciation, which is how much it drops overall, and then you've got also, at the end of that, you've got the book value, which is how much it's worth. So Let's have a look at year zero. At year zero, we've got uh, our annual depreciation is zero because nothing has been taken away yet. The cumulative depreciation, depreciation is nothing because we haven't charged it yet. And the book value, which is how much the thing is worth, is 250000 bucks. So nothing's happened. After one year, though, our annual depreciation is uh, 22500 It's dropped by 22500 And now it is worth... $227,500. Now what we've got this number here by going the 250000 subtract that number there, the 22500 And then we repeat it again. We'll go 227500 take away the depreciation, and then we get this value here, which is the $205,000. So that keeps on going like that. You keep on getting the book value, and you take the annual depreciation. Now, the other thing that you've got to look at here is the cumulative depreciation. And all we have to notice here is that it goes 22500 then it goes up another 22500 which gives us 45000 Then we add that one to it, and it goes there. Then we add that one to it, and it goes there. So each year we keep on adding $22,500 for it. So it builds up, and that's your cumulative depreciation. At the end of the whole shebang, when you've actually finally worked it out, you've got the book value here, which is how much the thing's worth, which is 25000 which is also the residual value. Remember we talked about the fact that you're going to have some value of this thing when you're finished. Your cumulative depreciation is how much it has dropped altogether, which is $225,000. If you add these two together too, you'll get your original value. That's just a bit of a, an aside. And then, of course, your annual depreci depreciation still stays the same. So you end up with how much the thing's worth, how much it dropped in value altogether, and what the annual depreciation was. Now, if you remember back to our qu question beforehand, we were asking what is the annual depreciate, what is the book value after four years? If we go to four years here, there is our 160,000, which is the same as what we worked out before. So this is how you work out um, how to do depreciation and in a table. And you may be asked to do a table, but it won't be too long. It wouldn't be more than uh, about four or five years. So a 10-year one is quite long. So that is the straight line depreciation.